Get ready to dive into a world where empires stand on the brink of war and terrible monsters tear at the fragile borderlands of men. The Adventurer Conqueror King System Imperial Imprint, or as we like to call it, Axe 2, is now live on Kickstarter. Axe 2 is the new edition of the acclaimed best-selling fantasy role-playing game. You'll find everything you need to enjoy epic fantasy campaigns with a sweeping scope. Whether you want to crawl through dungeons, experiment with alchemy, crossbreed monsters, run a merchant emporium, raise an undead legion, or even conquer an empire, Axe 2 supports your playstyle. Axe 2 integrates experience point mechanics, making campaign activities a seamless part of the core gameplay loop. Your character levels up in new and exciting ways each time you play, adding massive replayability to each of your adventures. Axe 2 offers 18 character classes, 378 spells, new combat mechanics, and so much more. Support Axe 2 on Kickstarter today. Welcome to Knocked Prone, a podcast of high crits, small fits, and varying wits. My name is Cade, and I am the host and game master of this Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition adventure, and I am joined here by the players to my left. Mason, playing Lakir. Brooklyn, playing Litzy. Danny, playing Tess. Caden, playing Blink. As last we left our adventurers, they met up with Talkin in the bell tower, the mushroom bell tower. They took a watch, kind of noticed some like suspicious activity going on. And then as Lakir was taking a watch, he came down from studying his books and noticed that Blink was being carted away. They went into panic mode after being offered a bribe to let Blink go and attacked these five hooded strangers and broke one of their legs. They found out that it was just the rangers trying to, like, take Blink somewhere that they don't really know where, and so now they're going to go get a heal bot, or at least attempt to try and get a heal bot to try and fix up this guy's leg without anybody knowing. So that's where we are. You guys just had that conversation. The one thing I wanted to add from last round, Cade was telling us that we leveled up thematically something to explain. It's just that because I stayed up for the first watch, uh, Tess stayed up for the first watch, uh, he did not level. So when that encounter happened... He didn't get a long rest. He did level. Oh, sorry. He didn't get a long rest. I don't know why I keep saying that. (laughs) No, that's fine. But you are in your direwolf form, which is for a full hour. But that's a big reason why the direwolf form You also have a plus five to that of temporary hit points from your... Yeah. Okay. So you have eight. All right. So Lakir's fox went off to... Phoenix went off to go find Lakir. Uh, are you guys waiting for Lakir? Are you guys kind of going and like hoping that the fox just catches up with you guys? Like, what are you guys doing? Blink, let's make a game plan. Okay. I think it's a, well, how stealthy are you? <laughs> I'm pretty stealthy. I am very far from stealthy. So here's my thought. If you disguise yourself as Ted, you're going to be a better match to go inside and try to be sneaky. I will act more as a backup if I need to be there. I assume they still think highly of me as they did just a few days ago. And so if you need my help, then I will come in as well, just as myself, um, undisguised. Um, But I assume since it's so early in the morning, like people aren't awake and up and going because no, yeah, the concern it's... here is that Ted would be awake and somewhere in there, you know? Yeah, it seems to be early enough in the morning that you don't think the the average person is not awake. You're not necessarily sure what Ted's schedule is, though. So yeah. it's still a risk. Well, knowing not knowing exactly where Ted is going to be in all of this, um, obviously being stealthy and as quick as possible is going to be key. Um, and then I assume that I know how to fetch one of the heal bots. So whatever that entails, I'm going to explain that to him. Yeah. Okay. Have the rangers left now? Yeah. So they carted off their uh, broken buddy and they are like going towards the, um, towards the headquarters, their headquarters. Okay. So. When, when they get sufficiently far, I'm going to walk back in, kind of do like the walk in a circle, lay down. Okay. And then, like, go to bed as a wolf, but transform back into Tess. But still, like, 
in the like ball form. Right. Yeah, perfect. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you transform back into Tess. Um, I'm just immediately sleeping. Okay, so you're not. But like, like I guess like Tess is probably still like slightly awake, but you'll get a message back from Alkir a little bit later that says, uh, "Do you need me right away? Phoenix won't stop mewing." Um. Well, we just wanted to let you know that we're about to break into the artifices. Um. Artifices building, and we're going to be disguising ourselves and stealing a heal bot or whatever, and then we're going to be healing someone. And then, anyway, we have this whole plan and everything, but you're not here to do it. So, if you, you want to join us, you have five six words. seconds. <laughs> so I keep talking anyway. Yeah, so kind of ramble on, so I hear if we're going to break into that steal a heal bot. And I say, I, you just respond in the middle of your ramble. You hear, wonderful, I'm in. Um, do you need me right away? Uh, I was had some things in mind. Um, I suppose we can wait a minute, but the longer we wait, the later it gets, and the more likely that Ted is going to be awake. And well, then I, I like try to like stop myself for six seconds. From, <laughs> is the door to the mushroom tower on the side facing the um, Oleander's castle, or on the side facing away? There is a door on either side. Okay, so on the side facing Oleander's castle, he'll come from the left side and just kind of be walking around. Um, and he'll be like, well, I'm here. And you'll see him be casting press, press digitation on his hands. And he'll kind of walk inside and be just like, all right, so we're stealing something? We are stealing a heal bot from the artifices to help our injured ranger friend. Um, and the way we are doing that is by Blink disguising himself as Ted, the head architect, and if needs be, I can come in as backup, and I think it would be great for you to be the Plan C backup as well. Wonderful ideas. I love the critical thinking. I did have one thing. So, are we trying to get on the bad side of every aura before we leave? Or is that just more... I thought that was kind of my thing, but... <laughs> uh, we can. Like, I, I'm not against it. Um... But, as well, it feels like it would be easier to steal it from someone who didn't want it. Perhaps Hive Mother Holly? I bet she would be willing to give one up, like, pretty happily. Or, at the very least, she won't be missing the one we take. That is actually a fantastic idea. Um, I'm definitely, definitely open to that as well. That might be a much easier plan. (laughs) Is there some sort of command that you give it? Do you have to have some kind of connection with it? In order to have the heal bot be controlled by you, it does take a little bit of intricate tinkering. There is a panel on the back that you open and have to do a few different mechanical things um, that honestly you wouldn't understand. But it's okay because I can help with this part. Maybe one day I'll learn. <laughs> <laughs> Quite. Well, I I just say, why don't you power it down, drag it back here, and then we can do whatever tinkering we need here in a safer area. Um, I do love the idea, though, and if we are going to be sneaking into Hive Mother Holly's area, um, I have something that I'd like to get myself, but I don't have all of the right components yet. Hence why I was out. I'll look over and see Tess kind of still sleeping. He "He seems pretty tuckered out. And neither of you got the most amount of sleep either. Perhaps you can just wait, rest a little bit. Um, I did go over some of the books, and I have a theory. However, I can't be sure. It's just conjecture at this point. Um, I'll be back in an hour tops. Is that all right? That's all right with me. Is that okay with you, Blink? Am I hearing this conversation? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. just in the... It's just to everyone? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, absolutely. That sounds like a fantastic plan. All right. Um, very well. I will leave you two to do the details of the plan. Um, perhaps one of you disguising yourselves as Hive Mother Holly and the other as another heel bot. Perhaps we're escorting this one for repairs or something. I don't know. I'm not very creative in this. We can just think of something. You're smart, right? 
Absolutely. Thank you, Lakia. I'm right. writing that in my journal. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go and say, wonderful. I've left the remaining books here. Um, if you would like something to do in the meantime, I know that you have a very active imagination. If you need anything, Phoenix knows where to find me. And I'll step out the door again. Where are you going? At this point in time, I think I would just be going to the Wizard's Tower. Okay. I, I'll basically go, and I know it's early, but I want to, like, knock on the Wizard's Tower and see if anyone's home, essentially. So as you approach the Wizard's Tower, you see lots of smoke coming from the top of, like, their factory. or not factory. Their uh, experiment, like, experimentation and inv- inv- invention uh, laboratory, and as you knock on the door, uh, Grand Wizard Dot opens the door right away and is like, Ah! It's nice to see an early riser as well. Uh, please, come in. Is everything alright? Oh, quite. Uh, we just like to get... Um, and not all of us here need so much sleep to wake up with the sun and go to bed with the sun. Some of us like to... And you could, like, almost smell the caffeine on her breath (laughs) like it seems like she just doesn't go to bed all right well um i wanted to number one and i'll pull out the book that i had retrieved and i'll say here i got this for you um as per our discussion uh do you have the paper and materials that might be needed to continue my experimentation on my spells uh i have been eager to get my hands on it um yeah, so she holds her hand up because she's, you know, a small creature. Mm-hmm. And uh, sh- she's, like, expectantly holds her hand up and is like, The paper, please? Oh, um... For for the good deeds. I thought you wanted me to sign it. I don't actually think that'll be necessary. Perhaps I could um, provide you with some sort of update. Things have happened. Um, but first, first... Our agreed upon arrangement, then we can get to the details. Fair? All right. Um, well, I'll sign it off whenever. Uh, you've done us a great service getting this book. Um, yeah, of course. You can have whatever supplies you need, and she'll bring the agreed upon supplies that you talked about with okay. her prior. Perfect. And then um, I'll say, all right. Um, now, I wanted your information. You see, I've been put on a bit of a special case. Um Involving the people of Grog Mountain Deer and Akira Moonscales. Do either of those names ring a bell? I can't say that they do. I think that, uh, well, that'd probably be a job for one of the historians. I'm not uh, much a, I'm not much of a keeper of those those names. Well, you see, we found some of the books the historians are keeping have been potentially tampered with. I'm just looking in to see if this is true or not. So these two uh, these two names just came across my point of reference. It appeared they were in the blue aura, so I just wanted to see if they had any familiarity or if you could provide me with any information. I'll uh I'll talk to some of our older our older people here and see if they remember anything. But uh, until then, um, is there anything else I can do for you? Well, so, yes. I had another request, another deal, if you will. Of course. Um, I will just be forthright with you. I think we have made some enemies and discovered something we shouldn't have. I do believe that the historians are hiding some nasty secret, and while I'm sure you are as well... I am more willing to agree with yours than I am with theirs, whatever yours may be. As such, I kind of produce the books and say, here are the two books I mentioned, as well as a few more. These were people from your aura that I believe are missing or not around anymore. I do believe that there is a conspiracy of some kind, and I wanted to offer this information... For some vials, if you would. Oh, um, well, she rolls up her sleeves and she looks at you and she shows you her wrists and she's like, I don't hold anything under my sleeves. I, uh, I would imagine that the historians are full of secrets 
uh, they are a nasty bunch. They've been holding What's them books up? for us. I don't think we we don't have much of an agenda to be pushing around here. But um, yeah, I've got plenty of vials, and she hands you like a bag of like forty vials and takes the books from you and says and says that she'll go and see what they're about. And she looks at you and kind of like furrows her eyebrows and is like, "Well, I'm I'm sorry, I don't have more." I, uh, well, we lost a, a number of things around here lately, namely a few uh, high-level spell scrolls, but I don't think it's anything to worry about. We've had losses like this in the past. I think it's just something that we might have uh, misplaced, but... Wonderful. As well, um, one final thing. As I've said, we've made potential enemies with the historians, and we may dis- disappear, so to speak, soon as well um i just wanted to see if there's something that we could strike going forward if i was able to contact you would you still be interested in my research even if i am not in the city she gives a thousand yard stare and then she looks back at you and says i'm sorry might i help you of course i thank you for your help and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your morning. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll kind of... You, you could see the bewilderment on her face. She does not recognize you. Right. I will go and kind of go and say, well, all right. Lakir has an idea of what has happened. He doesn't know for sure. But using that idea, I want to go swing by my old house. Okay. And see if, number one, if my parents seem to be home. Are they they're both? Not. They're not. Neither of them are home. They're, um, you don't know where they are, but they're not there. I'm going to try the door. Is it open? Yeah, it's open. I'll just go inside. Yeah. You know, um, so your family was kind of one of the more well-off families in the, not everyone has houses. Like a lot of people stay in their aura, like facility places. They've got like just extra beds and stuff. Okay. But your family was one of the families who was, uh, well off enough and high up in the ranks enough to actually be gifted a house. Okay. So I'm going to do a quick detect magic. Um, and I'm going to just look around. I think it's 60 feet. I'm going to look around and see if there's anything that appears off in the house, like any magical items I'm not aware of or, you know, yeah. um, do I see anything? The only magic item that you can see is uh, right above the mantle on your like uh, at your old family's fireplace. You can see uh, the the shield, the family heirloom shield that you were promised when you were a child, but your dad didn't give it to you because he thought you were a disappointment. Going to quickly start. I'm going to look around, check that no one is here. And then I am going to try to take it. Okay, roll me a sleight of hand check. Three plus three for a six. Okay. Uh, you hit, You kind of like slowly try to tap it off of its pedestal and it clatters into one of your hands quicker than you thought. Like the weight shifts as it like starts to fall mm-hmm. and gravity takes over and just... <laughs> and it falls on the floor and you can hear footsteps from upstairs. Okay, um, I'm going to, I'm going to hide behind whatever furniture we have and attempt to just like, I want to see who's coming down. All right, uh, roll me a stealth. 13. Um, you see your brother, Alexander, kind of like down the stairs and he's like rubbing his eyes and he's wearing uh, blue and red striped pajamas and he looks around um, as he's very tired and it's like, ah, mom must have left the cat open. And he like walks back upstairs. Okay. Not noticing. Cool. I will kind of, okay. And go back over to it and kind of one, two, three lift and try to carry it out. It is a fairly heavy shield and I'm weak so All right, roll I, me a strength check and roll me a sleight of hand or er, uh, strength and stealth okay so for strength whoops um, 
So for the strength check, an 11. Okay. And then for the stealth check, natural one. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Okay, so you pick it up, right? So it, it's really heavy, but you... As you're picking it up, like not meaning to make sounds, yeah. but like your body just kind of naturally grunts as you pick it up. And um, you're kind of like shifting the weight back and forth between your legs, but you're not necessarily used to the weight. And so your feet just like. I'm just going to try going as fast as I can. I'm just going to like start dragging the shield with me. Okay, I'm going to roll percentage dice okay. just to see if a 19. So um, your brother, Alexander, kind of calls down the stairs like, Hey, you be quiet. I'm sleeping. And he like just drifts right back into sleep. Cool. I'll just, as I'm going, just stupid oaf and take the, take the, um, <laughs> the shield and eventually lug it back to... The group. You notice Lakir come back with a just a large shield in front of his body. I kind of open the door. I'll put it down and say, "All right, I'm back." Did you decide a plan? So I kind of like the idea of instead of disguising as Ted, disguising as a heel bot, because like how inconspicuous would that be of a heel bot going in and getting another heel bot and leaving you know what i mean it's like oh they're like programmed to like take shifts or one of them needs an oil change i don't know (laughs) so i actually like that idea rather than going as ted and someone who could potentially cause an issue or you know what i mean so or who knows maybe they see ted stealing it and then they're like execute ted for being a thief you know that would suck so Maybe we do that. Yes, heel bots is the direction we're going to go. Wonderful. Um, I do not have access to that kind of magic. Is there a role you'd like to need to play in all this? Or should I just be the distraction? I need to go visit Hive Mother Holly anyway. Distraction would be fantastic. Wonderful. All right. Well, I think we might be good to head over. Um, I did want to ask... Actually, I wanted to share some things with you before we left. I think it's best that... (sighs) All right. If everyone could sit down, uh, and I'll kind of wake Tess up. I don't know if you are. Yeah, I think I was like, just like lightly awake, kind of listening, but still like resting. All right. So I have a theory. Uh, I don't know if you've had any chance to look over the books, Um, but from what I can tell, All of the names seem to have a similar pattern. Guttural sounds. Uh, As my father would call it, garbage speak. To me, it infers that these names were people previously living here. They were on the forgotten shelf, which leads me to believe that people forgot them as that identity entirely. But I believe there was a purging of undesirable peoples in the city. I think those with less sharp features were either destroyed from the city, uh, cast out of the city, or forgotten about entirely. And I think that's happened to me. I'm curious, do we recognize? Oh man, how juicy would that be? <laughs> you do recognize him. Okay, good. <laughs> By whatever magic that um, that Dot was not able to recognize uh, Lakir with doesn't seem to be over you guys. Yes, if I become an unfamiliar face, perhaps there's a reminder that we should put in place to make sure that I'm not treated as hostile as those rangers were. A secret code. Something. Something to remember not just me as a person, but something to trigger your memories in general. I have an idea. And I'll go and with one of my many pockets in my thing, I'll just like um, cut like scraps of my robes and then 
basically tie one around like each of your wrists or arms, whichever you prefer. I'm just like, there, we'll all have this. That way, in case there is some confusion, we know that this means friend versus, like it, it'll help identify versus friend versus foe. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yes. All right, perfect. Tarkin cuts himself one and like puts it around his arm and he's like, yeah, we're friends. <laughs> Tarkin, I actually did want to ask a question as you are more elderly than ourselves. Do you know who these people were? And I like show him some of the books. He squints at them and he, he says, do you have my book as well? Yes, and I'll go over to the uh, bag of holding in which I had hidden a bunch of the books, and I'll pull it out. I'll say, here, um, I didn't know if it would be the most stable thing to provide you, as you are, I have a reputation of being on edge. Right. But I think I'm starting to understand, and at least now you'll be able to know whatever lies they wrote about you. He flips through the book, and... He looks, he like holds one of the books that you had in your hand and his own record in his hand and he like weighs them and he's like, well, like you said, I'm pretty old, um, but why is my book so light? And he tosses it back to you and you catch it and his book is lighter than your own book and you are 12 and he is old. Perhaps when they... Whatever happened that stopped you from being a cleric? Hive Mother Holly's. And I'll go and retrieve that book as well. And I'll say, Hive Mother Holly's book had all of its pages ripped out, but it was still in the normal section of the library. Perhaps that's what they did. They reset your history and then put you on the Forgotten Brooks bookshelf to allow you to fly by unnoticed. He like gestures for his book back. And he flips through it and he looks at the binding really closely and he starts pointing out pages that are quite obviously ripped from the book in many, many sections that he has like, his book is like a fourth of the paper of every other book. And it's just lots of tear marks at the, uh, the bridge of it. It's just like a bunch of little shreds. Do we have all of our books? Yes, I've put them in this Litzy's bag. Okay. I've, I've made sure to keep those hidden. Um, I didn't know... I'm starting to feel like that is a good idea. I concur. I did not know exactly what would be useful information, and I didn't know what exactly would be dangerous information, so I apologize for keeping you in the dark, talking. but you do have to understand that we are in a position of near-deathly proportions. Well, if this is what they think it is, um, I think they've been... The historians or whoever's behind all of this might be manipulating people's minds and, well, I don't want to be in the dark any longer. I don't want to have ten more years, maybe if I live that long, of blank space that I can't even fill myself. Well, I think we'll be able to start writing your own history. And I'll, like, point to, like, the band. <laughs> yeah, and he, like, points to his band, and he's so excited. Um, he, like, he's he just runs out. Like, he's so excited. <laughs> he just runs runs out of the, out of the uh, bell tower. So what, what happened in the library? Um, like, I just remember coming through the door, and they... They were attacking you. I don't know if I can explain what happened, but the sequence of events were that after we arrived, people started seemingly not rushing, but evacuating the library. And soon after, I think a trap or defense system was triggered, causing whatever those things were to attack us. And, well, I, the rest you were there for. So, do you think they planned this? Or it was just something we unfortunately came across? 
I'm not entirely sure. It wouldn't... It wouldn't completely blow my mind to think that Amalek has set up defenses for any intruder, especially considering what we found. But considering he did greet us, I don't know, it does feel personal. I can't okay. say for sure, though. I've never read of those defenses before. Interesting. Yesterday, though. I didn't realize it wasn't like a more direct attack. So there's a little bit of ambiguity to what's going on. Well, I think the pillaging of the library will be reported. And I think it's best if we try to present our story to Oleander first. Another option is we could try to get out of the city first. I mean, do we really have any trust in Oleander is the question. I don't. And that's why I wanted to test the water before we actually gave him I all guess the information. That's fair. All I know, and I don't know much, so take it with a grain of salt, is that I do believe we have friends outside of the city. Interesting. Uh, care to elaborate, <laughs> or...? I really can't, but... Is, is this just a feeling you have? No, I've gotten hints and clues but I can't divulge them at the moment I lean over to Lakir and I'm like he's listening to his grasshopper again (laughs) (laughs) oh kind of like not in like understanding like well okay whatever you think is best Tess I'm sure there are plenty of friendly unknown beasts outside of our beautiful haven that we've lived in our entire lives so sensing this not trying to be like rude but also wanting to <laughs> push my like my thought a little bit i be like yeah I it's not like they found any and brought them back or anything certainly there wouldn't be more would there oh I'd, I'd assume that we'd all just look at blink at that point blink are there i never saw any people besides the rangers all right. but um there are uh many threats out in the wild and the reason why i didn't come across people too much is because the uh the animals i lived with tended to stay away from any type of civilization because that was a threat to them so me and my so by saying they tended to stay away from civilization were there areas that seemed like there might be civilization that they were avoiding there were ruins that the animals would avoid. I would also come across symbols, things that were extremely resemblant to the symbols we saw in the library in the secret room. And I have them laid out on the floor over there, and I'll say, any of those in specific, particular? All of those? They are similar, but I don't know the language or the meaning, but they look similar. So, if there's writing, there's a writer. If you didn't make that, and I'm assuming none of the animals had the ability that you were raised by had the ability to make that, if neither of you were the culprit, culprit, then the culprit must have been something else, something intelligent enough to draw a symbol. So, sorry, before we go, Kate, I, I do an investigation on my hand, like, try to do it, like, subtly. Like, is it, like, a noticeable mark? Yes. So, similar okay. to Blink's hand, your hand is... Uh, one side of your hand has a, a red dragon that is swirling around, and the right side has uh, orange dragons circling around, and they're burned into the back of your hands, similar to how they are on Blink's hands. Blink didn't feel it, though. And you kind of have these little 
little uh, indentations, points coming up from your knuckles. So if I feel like people see them, would that count as revealing them? No. Oh, okay. You're, the, the dream but, uh, is the thing that you aren't supposed to reveal. Okay. So I guess, let's see. I believe you're the one with the strongest current ties to the city with everything going on. So I'm curious about what you would like to do. I had something about that too. I'll go in and I believe we grabbed her father's book Uh as well when we went there. So I'm going to hand it to her and say, I haven't read this. I'm assuming neither have they. If you'd like to find out the truth or whatever truth has been written in history about your father is perhaps you can learn closure that way I'm still on your side if you want to break him out before we leave I'm just saying not all people or parents are saints I hear what you're saying and I do have a desire to leave the city um, although I, I also feel just as strong of a desire to um, do what I can for my father as well um, and while I'm open minded in, in investigating his book I will likely want to um, help him the best I can before we make any steps um, away from the city not knowing if we're really going to be able to come back but honestly whether or not the creatures outside of this city are friendly or unfriendly um, I think that it's somewhere that we need to be and that will hold um many of the answers that we're looking for, certainly. As you say that, Talkin bursts through the door and says, come, come quick. They, something's happened to the rangers. And you guys, do you guys walk outside? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you follow him, walk outside. You see a large billowing pillar of smoke coming from the rangers headquarters so it's still like dark, but at this point the sun's starting to come up. So uh, Tess and Blink, you can kind of get little glimpses of what's happening. But um, the Rangers headquarters seems to be on fire and coming out from the front of it. Blink, you recognize faintly your friend Elwin Graynor coming out of the Rangers headquarters gravely injured. And she has a like a half man, half hyena, like that she's dragging on her back and she collapses to the floor as the um, ranger's headquarters goes up in flames. Oh. And that is where we're going to end for tonight. Okay. Dang. Yeah. (laughs) So thank you for joining us. Um, It's seriously such a pleasure to play with all you guys this is this is the star cast right here all you guys do so well in role playing and i text you all through the week and it's great and anyway but my name is cade and i'm the host and game master of this dungeons and dragons fifth edition adventure and i'm joined here by the wonderful players to my left mason playing look here brooklyn playing litzy danny playing tess caden playing blank awesome go ahead and give us a podcast review if you can if you can't Refer us to a friend. And remember, when life knocks you flat on your back, cast Fireball. Anyway, (laughs) see you next time.